subject and verb agreement you get it right you understand it properly and use it properly correctly in your conversation or communication you will get rid of almost 75 percent of your errors so essay type it's a long answer type so you will have to answer any two out of the four given questions choices less some prose like novel or anything where there is dialogue or monologue so that may follow this everyday language few poems which follow some rhythm will have fixed meter or maybe fixed number of words hello everyone i am dr shalini professor of english vidyashram first grade college the temple of excellence mysore Today I am here to introduce the syllabus for first sem BBA prescribed by the University of Mysore. So we'll just understand what is there in today's module. We'll be knowing about the syllabus prescribed for the first sem and the pattern of evaluation. How will the evaluation happen and also the pattern of question paper. What is there in your question paper. So these we'll be understanding in this module today. So let's begin. The first thing is the poetry. You know what's a poetry? Poetry is a collection of poems. So we have almost eight poems over here. Okay, we have eight poems for this semester prescribed. So which are those? The first one is authored by William Shakespeare. So it's a sonnet. This is a sonnet number two. So sonnet is a poem that has 14 lines so that you'll be learning in the coming uh, sessions. So it's a sonnet. Shakespeare was very well known for uh, his sonnets. So out of that, one of the very famous sonnets that is when 40 winters shall this is thy broth. So that you will be understanding in this semester. After that, we have William Wordsworth who was known as the nature poet. So his poem, the world is too much with us. So that's the second poem you have. The third one, the wagon of shoes written by Avram Sutskever, he is also known as the Yiddish poet. Okay, so some people also pronounce it as Abraham. So Avram or Abraham Sutskever, he writes about the wagon of shoes. This is actually, he describes a war scene there. So this is something related to the Holocaust or the German dictator that is um, Hitler. So this is the poem related to that. So then nine gold medals written by David Roth. This is also a very interesting poem for you. Then we have Rabindranath Tagore's false religion. He writes about the religion that is practiced like we practice religion, but which is very much false that should not be followed. So that is about Rabindranath Tagore's uh, poem. Then we have George Herbert's Avarice. So that poem also you have. This also is a very interesting poem. Okay, you'll enjoy reading it. So then we have Robert Burns, one of the poems that is a romantic poems. Oh, my love's like a red, red rose. So he compares his love to the red rose. Okay, most commonly it is compared like that only. So this poet also, but it is differently compared in this poem. So then at last we have give patels on killing a tree. This is also something related to nature. What are the effects of killing a tree? What happens? What are the after effects? The consequences of killing a tree. Okay. So usually you cut the tree, isn't it? You don't kill a tree. So how do you kill a tree? So that is very interesting here. Okay. So give patel writes about that. So this collection of poems you'll be studying under poetry. Then we have prose also. Okay, we have prose also. What do we have in this prose? We have George Orwell's The Miser. Okay, it's a short story. It's called as Miser. Okay, then we have Saki who is an Indian writer. He has written this storyteller. So these both are short stories. So these both you will be learning. Then we have Ramachandra Guha who is also an Indian author. He was a political writer. So he is a political writer. He also has written about nature. So he has written a book out in which this is one of the essays. So those both were short stories. This is an essay. Going Green is an essay there in one of the books. Then we also will be studying about Dr. B.R. Ambedkar's essay, The Position of Women in Hinduism and Buddhism. So how are women treated in Hinduism and Buddhism? That will be understanding. Okay, so he was actually a Hindu, but later on he converts himself, he accepts Buddhism. So he has compared the position of women. So that we'll be understanding in this semester. So then we have language component also. Language component is all about grammar. 
okay so what are we learning in grammar we'll be learning about punctuation okay so it's all about full stop comma colon semicolon question mark quotes all these so we'll be learning about punctuation then we have articles okay articles are the words that are used to introduce nouns so you must have heard about this a and and the so this is what we are going to understand under articles so then we have prepositions very easy prepositions is one of the part of speech and this tells us about the relationship of the subject in connection to the other words in the sentence so examples of prepositions on in over all these are examples of prepositions okay we'll be learning more different types of prepositions also we'll be learning in this semester when we go in detail so then the other one what we have is the subject verb agreement this is the most important topic in english grammar so this constitutes almost 75% of the errors if at all you get this right subject and verb agreement you get it right you understand it properly and use it properly correctly in your conversation or communication you will get rid of almost 75% of your errors in communication so this is very very important so subject verb agreement or subject verb concord so we'll be going in detail in the coming sessions so now we have to understand the pattern of evaluation so how is your marks divided how is the marks divided will be understanding so you will be having internals first so the first internal test is for 10 marks okay first internal test is for 10 marks here you will be given questions about prose or poetry okay about prose or poetry it depends on the teacher so this is all for 10 marks it will be written assessment it will be held like a class test then we have the second internal test it is purely about this language component part so that is also for 10 marks and in the third place we have this class test it can also be on an oral test the teacher can conduct it like a viva for you in the class or maybe some assignment can be given so some question can be given to you and you have to write about it so that can also happen or maybe some surveys can be given to you like you are given a question and you have to go around and collect information collect data so that also can be done or maybe you will be asked to conduct some interview or paper presentation something like this so this will constitute for 10 marks so both the internals that is first class test and second class test they may be in this format okay it can be interviews it can be written test it can be oral test it can be assignment or it can be any survey also again that will constitute for constitute 10 marks okay so all together internals will be for 40 marks internals will be for 40 marks so it is very important for you to attend the internals so then term and exam we have it for 60 marks so 60 plus 40 internals then you get it for all together that is 100 marks it's 40 marks internals then for 60 marks is the term and exam paper so be very careful you have to attend the internals at any cost so let us go further now the pattern of question paper how will be the question paper for you so you'll have objective type questions that is one word answers it is not mcq it is one word answer or you have to answer in one phrase it can be one word or maybe it can be a phrase you have to answer in a phrase phrase is a group of words so one word or one phrase so that is for 8 marks so there will be option there 15 questions will be given you have to answer any 8 so then we have reference to context that means it will be from the poetry only it will be from the poetry only it is also called as annotation okay annotation they will give you a few lines from the poem they'll pick few lines from the poem and ask you to annotate it okay so you will have to write from which poem it is chosen who is the poet of that who has written that poem and in what context it is written so all that you have to write and you have to answer four of it so that's it you will have to answer any three of it so out of six poetry there will be choice you have eight poems you have eight poems but you have to answer you have to read any six and out of that you have to answer any three you cannot leave any because you don't know from which poem it will be coming so you have to read all the eight you cannot decide and choose which six you are going to read 
Okay, so you have to read all the eight, then answer any three. So don't go for the six. Okay, you decide that you'll read all the eight and then you can answer any three. So then essay type questions on prose. So essay type, it's a long answer type. So you will have to answer any two out of the four given questions, choices less. So that is for 10 marks. Okay, that's for 10 marks. Each question is for five marks. Okay, each question is for five marks and you'll have to answer any two of the given four. Choices less, so you have to read all those. Fine. Then essay type questions on poetry. Poetry also you have this five marks questions and that will be out of four you have to answer any two. So similar to this prose, you have to answer like that only in poetry also. So both of it will be essay type. Okay, so how much does it come up to? 10, 10, 12 and 8. So 20 plus 20, 40. This is all together for 40 marks. And what is remaining? That is the language component. So what is there in language component? So in grammar and composition, that is the language component part, you have this punctuation. Questions about punctuation, everything will be one mark question. So you'll have five, maybe fill in the blanks or something like that. Okay, so you'll have five questions. Again, articles you'll have for five marks. Then prepositions also, you'll have it for five marks, all one mark questions only. There is no choice over here. You have to answer all the five. So none of these uh, mains will have choice. Then we have this subject and verb agreement. So that is also for five marks. So this altogether comes to 20 marks. So what has happened now? Internals 40 marks, prose and poetry that is for 40 marks. This is for internals 40 marks. Then you have prose. Okay. So that is for 40 marks again, then you have this language component part. So this language component also you have it for 20 marks. Okay, so this all together comes to 100 marks. So this is the pattern of question paper you will be having. So this was all about syllabus. Apart from this, you need to know few things. So I'll just introduce you to few terms that you have to be familiar with. Few things you have to know before you can get into studies here. So what are those things? What are those terms you have to understand? What is a prose? We already know what is like which are the prose that is there there. So now we'll be understanding what is a prose. We, we are going to understand what is the term now. So prose is nothing but a written piece of work. Okay. It's actually a written piece of work and it contains sentences. Poetry actually does not contain complete sentences, but prose contains complete sentences. It contains sentences and paragraphs. If at all it was poetry, you have stanzas or maybe verses also, but in prose you have paragraphs. So which are the kinds of writing that come under prose are this short stories, novels, journals, articles, all these essays, letters, editorials, all these come under prose only. So it actually follows natural pattern of speech, like how you speak, okay, how you deliver the meaning to the listener. That is the way the prose is there. So it is just written in complete sentences. You can, as you are speaking, you can just read and go. So that is called as a prose. It actually has a specific grammatical structure. So the sentence structure will be there and that is called as a grammatical structure. It follows it and sentences and paragraphs are there according to the grammatical structure. Then they may use this everyday language. Some prose like novel or anything where there is dialogue or monologue. So that may follow this everyday language. So whenever you read few novels or so or works or so, you may feel that yes, you are looking at somebody who is at your neighborhood. Okay, so that is the beauty of this prose. So then sentences and thoughts, they actually continue across lines. Means when you read the paragraphs, there is a flow of ideas in the paragraphs. Okay. So one para is related to another para. It, you are reading one para and it is not at all connected to the second. It is not like that in a prose. It will be continuously connected. The idea flows continuously. So that is all about prose. Now we'll understand what is poetry. Poetry is actually a collection of poems. If it is one, it is poem. If it is set of many poems put together, that is called as a poetry. So what is a poetry? It's a way of expressing impressions, emotions and events that are highly compressed. You cannot have long sentences in a poetry, in a poem. Okay, so that's why it is compressed and every word counts. 
there is a fixed number of words in a poem in a verse or in a line in a poem okay it is not like you have to have one line may have many words other line will have lesser words no it's not like that few poems which follow some rhythm will have fixed meter or maybe fixed number of words so that is the beauty of poetry so whenever you add a tune to it it will be very melodious so that is what is a poem or a or poetry so this is said to be the most beautiful form of literature poems are considered to be the most beautiful form of literature because you cannot add a tune to a prose but you can add tune and you can sing also with the poetry so this is all about poetry and words which are chosen by the poet words which are chosen by the poet they are chosen with utmost care because he has to think that if it is complete sentence he can write it very easily when it has to be a poem it is limited so he has to be very careful in choosing the words so whoever writes a prose for example if at all a person has written a novel okay he is called as an author but a person who writes a poem is not called as an author he is called as a poet okay or a poetess if it is a lady so this is the difference between the prose and the poetry okay so there is one more thing you have to understand that is the rhyme scheme so this is very interesting probably you might have learned in your lower classes lower grades but uh, it is very interesting to learn it now also suppose we'll consider a stanza i'll just write a stanza very well known uh, poem for you that is uh, uh, you might have heard this poem right isn't it twinkle twinkle little star you might have heard right the rhyme okay i'm going to write only two lines I'm just going to write two lines. Other than that, I'll be writing the last two words of the other line. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. So this is the most well-known rhyme I can say. So why did I write about rhyme scheme? So here you can see that the word star rhymes with R. You have to choose the rhyming words like this, and you can give a name to it. you give a name to it like this it can be a small a it can be a capital a also that depends so here you can see high and sky are rhyming so now you can give another name for this i'll be considering the capital letters upper case letters i'll be considering so these are the rhyming words you have marked you don't consider anything in between you are going to consider only the last words that are rhyming so the rhyme scheme you can mark you have already marked the rhyming words over here so suppose somebody asks you what is the rhyme scheme of the poem okay what is the rhyme scheme of the poem suppose somebody ask you then you will write it as a a b b so this is the rhyme scheme of the poem as the paragraph continues you can continue with the names like c c d d this way you can continue it that way so this is called as the rhyme scheme there are many names given to it like iambic pentameter all these and all so you need not have to worry too much about it rhyme scheme if you mark that much is enough so this when you know the rhyme scheme adding a tune to it will be very easy okay whenever you have this rhyme scheme the poem can be sung with a rhythm okay the poem will have a rhythm in it so this is all about rhyme scheme so the terms you had to be familiar with were poetry or poems then you have this rhyme scheme so this was all about the introduction of syllabus so let us meet again in our next session that is about the first poem okay we'll be learning the first poem prescribed for you in the list of poems so let us meet again see you soon with another interesting session take care bye bye